What's behind this ethnic tension and is it all politically motivated? Yeah, you know, but let me quickly correct um, what you alluded to earlier. You know, the two, there are no two sides playing the ethnic card. There's only one, one side that is playing the ethnic card, and definitely not the Labour Party, uh, precisely is the APC. And of course, it is, the, the, the tension itself is more contrived, you know, than real. And um, it was precipitated, you know, by the fact of the, the reality that issued from the presidential election conducted two weeks ago, which indicated that um, the Labour Party you know, is ahead of uh, APC in Lagos. Not just merely according to the figures released by INEC, but by the, fig the reality of the with figures which had substantial margins, contrary to what was reported. Now, of course, um, people resort to ethnic regional cleavages, right? Is the cheapest recourse for desperate politicians in Nigeria to place up either at national level or at the subnational or state level. Um, in, we saw that actually in the composition of the ticket of the three leading parties. Uh, the most uh, emphatic was the ticket that was uh, chose the same the Muslim Muslim ticket. Now this is a direct challenge you know, to the pluralism and diversity of Nigeria. And there is no reason, there is no, the only logical sense it makes is that the ticket is intended to weaponize Islam, religious division, you know, to seek victory in the election. Uh, because, as I said, I leave it to you or anyone to provide the logic behind, you know, having a simple ticket in a country that needs more than anything else, you know, national unity and integration. Now, so this is a kind of politics now that is being transported to the governorship election in Nigeria, the weaponization of, div of division again. In the presidential election, uh, from available resources, Actually, more Yoruba voted for uh, Peter Obi than the, the, than the Igbo. Now, the fact that there is a substantial presence of Igbo in Lagos, it's almost, it's a universal, um, uh, it's universal, the reason behind it is universal. And that is the reason that we should be proud of, that it's cosmopolitan, cosmopolitanism, uh, everywhere in the world, and here in Nigeria itself. You see, every state capital or urban centers tend to have a lot of diversity in the population, uh, uh, the comprising population. See, Lagos is still the commercial capital of Nigeria in every sense. It was a national political capital for many years. So ordinarily this should explain, you know, why there is this diversity of population. There is nothing peculiar to it. And that nobody should then, you know, contrive it into something that is sinister. You don't do that. Look, Rishi Shinak is from India. He's the Prime Minister of the uh, UK today. And of course, Barack Obama was president of, of, of U.S. And the, the mayor of London is a Muslim. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but, but it's, all, it's all very good to cite those instances. And I think a lot of people would agree with you. Um, but the question is, how do you think those ethnic tensions are likely to affect the governorship election in Lagos on Saturday. I mean, are we looking at 
all-out war, or is it quite not quite on that scale? <laughs> well, you know, uh, the best person to answer that question probably will be the Inspector General of Police. I can only speculate, you know, about the degree of tension, that, but the kind of question, the person who, has, who can provide the answer to the question you have raised, you know, is, is the Chief Security Officer, that's the President, and the Inspector General, you know, they, they, they should know more about the security in Nigeria or Lagos State more than anybody. What should worry us is what I've said, uh, you know, highlighted earlier, you know, the weaponization of the research to, you know, the weaponization of division. Uh, and as I said, it's only one side that is playing it. And they are using arguments that don't hold water. Right, but in, yeah. that, in that case, let me, let me jump in there again, and I apologize because we're, we're, we're losing time. But, I mean, is it your sense that the security services and the state governments are ready to live up to their duties to protect the citizens and ensure that they can vote in a peaceful environment in Lagos? Are you reassured? Well, uh, well I expect that that would be the case. I don't know the, the degree or the size of the security personnel that have been deployed to Lagos to in anticipation of any any any, any breakdown of uh, law and order. What should worry us is those people, this desperate recourse, you know, to keep on fanning the embers of you know the ethnic division in Lagos, just to score a point, you know, uh, that. So it's not, uh, I have a reasonable expectation that the elections will go, uh, will be largely free of uh, breakdown of law and order. But, but having said that, now, it also depends to, it takes two to tango. The very side of the divide is, is that set, you know, on violence because the stakes are so high, you know, there is nothing that fuels violence more than desperation. Desperation to conceal the truth, to want to hold on to what does not belong to you. So this is the case, you know, there are several aspects to security, there is deterrence, there is preventive, and then of course there is the actual, you know, grappling with uh, a security crisis when it breaks through. The one good thing that I, I experienced during the week was that I had the meeting with the Deputy Commissioner of Operation, um, Police Operations in Lagos, and um, he said he was on his way from Alaba, you know, where, where there is a concentration of people of um, such his origins. Uh, he said he went there to reassure them that they are safe and that uh, we should entertain no apprehension of fear, you know, about coming out to vote in the elections on Saturday. I was very happy about that, that they are thinking that is the kind of preventing from that standpoint. Now, I can say that I reasonably expect that, you know, uh, the security situation will be uh, adequately met. But you never know. As I said earlier, uh, there are some ways, whatever you do, if somebody is determined to do what I mean, look, some kings in Lagos, for instance, and they've started saying that uh, they want to commence on a traditional ritual called the Uru, right? For three, four days, beginning from today, you know, that people should not come out between certain hours. You know, the, 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 their timing, of course, you know, fits perfectly, you know, with the election period. And of course, you could easily see the, what they are trying to do uh, with that kind of uh, suggestion. So this is, this is the extent to which we have gone. 
you know, to introduce uh, the potential violence, you know, in the country, I mean, labor states especially. Yes, I, I can understand but, that. Um, but let me just make a quick point here, that I understand that that declaration of Oro and the worship of Oro during the same period as Saturday's election, that that's been clarified and um, that there won't be a ban on movement during the period of the election. Um, I, I don't know what you're hearing, but that's what, what I'm hearing, that, that that has been clarified. But beyond that, um, I'm wondering, Mr. Shintokun, if many people, many of the Labour parties and Peter B's obedient movement are heartbroken after Mr. B came third in the official results of the presidential election and in that regard are they likely to give up on these governorship elections oh no no not at all i mean you know you are once young young the youth the only young people tend to be stubborn you know they don't give up that easily what i've seen and that that, that makes me glad is that people will see or you don't Right. Um, I think we uh, we lost the the sound there. I'm not quite sure what happened, but um, he suddenly cut off in the middle of uh, the discussion. There, uh, we will try and get back to him if we can in the last m couple of minutes or so that's left to let him at least finish what he was saying there. But I think the general thrust of it is that um, he's suggesting that the youth. Um, are still inspired and it's not just on the presidential level that um, he's fairly confident that there's going to be a reasonable turnout of uh, people who were supporters of P. Toby and his obedient movement and the Labour Party um, uh, turnout um, that will be good enough um, to make a difference in the vote on Saturday in spite of all the ethnic tension that we were talking about and the threat that appears to be hanging over that election. Um, it doesn't look like they're getting him back, so um, I think we're going to... Right, but uh, he's, he's not back yet. Um, I also was keen to ask him how much um, the allegations stemming from the recent presidential election of fraud, manipulation, violence, vote rigging and intimidation, along with concerns about things like Beavers and IREV, um, are also potentially overshadowing the anticipation for Saturday's governorship election. And I'm told that Mr. Oshintokun is back with us. I, I apologize. I'm not quite sure what happened there. But you were, you were telling us about your expectations um, about sort of potential turnout, um, especially with the youth who supported P. Toby. Well, you know, as I said, look, uh, when we were young, I mean, one of the uh, typical you know, characteristics of young people is being stubborn, you know. Uh, the only person who will profit, you know, from that attitude is the status quo that they want to change. And uh, these are very intelligent young guys who are determined. So they know very well that, you know, they, if, they, if they allow a party to set in, that is precisely what we don't want the aspiration. That is what that person will wish for. But as I said, look, I've also, I like taking random samplings, you know, when I'm around, you know, uh, that, look, what I've observed is a doubling down, you know, on the position that they've taken at the last presidential election. We are going to see fairly the same proportion of turnout of people who are going to vote. And they're going to vote with the determination that their votes will count. And of that, I have no, uh, I have no reservations about saying that, in saying that. So, of course, um, as far as I can project, you know, of course, I, I mean, I'm not uh, a neutral umpire. But what I, what I can see ahead, of course, is it is a definite victory.
you know, for our candidates in the Saturday election. So that suggests that you don't have concerns about things like Beavers and IREV um, and, you know, all those kinds of INEC issues potentially overshadowing um, the, your, your sort of an positive anticipation for the governorship election on Saturday. I was going to say that when you are trying to explain why we lost the uh, communication that we were experiencing the same thing as an ex server, you know, but I don't, uh, I, I, well, I, I've always told people that, look, I have no reason to give the INEC the benefit of the doubt in, what, in whatever they want to do. I, I like to be pleasantly surprised by doing something good. I said that before the presidential election, and it turned out they confirmed the worst of the fears of cynics. You know, allocating 12 states to, to the three parties. Look, it is statistically improbable that APC, PDP, and LP will, will, score 12, will win in 12, 12 states. But you can use it you know, to pursue an intellectually fraudulent argument. So from this INEC, from the perspective of INEC, I live with their public servants, but my opinion of them is very low. And uh, I have every reason to have that kind of opinion. Uh, look, even the resident electoral commissioner here, you know, had a quite a terrible pedigree in what he did and when he was in Osho State, uh, when he oversaw the Osho State governorship election in, in 20... Um, 2019 or thereabouts. We called several times. A lot of people said, look, this man, we don't change this man. You know, it's bad news for Lagos State, but he's still there. So if we have to live with that, I'm afraid. The place, and of course. You're, you're going to have to live with that. Um, but in those circumstances, you've expressed your optimism that you potentially will really shake up the political landscape in Lagos on the governorship level, so we'll have to watch and see. Um, I apologize for interrupting you, Mr. Oshuntokun, but we are actually out of time, and Akin Oshuntokun is the Director General of the Labour Party's Campaign Council, and he was talking to me there from...